In this video, we will be looking into the necessary steps taken when animals produce waste, focusing on storage treatment and yielding biomass, energy uses, and direct applications of manure. Now, let me pass the mic over to Alex Cornway and he'll give you a nice interactive look as to what are the necessary steps and what we, I mentioned would be viewed in this video. Storage of organic waste is an important precaution to take to prevent spreading of pathogens. Since there are different types of manure, different types of storage will be used. Lagoons are the most inexpensive storage systems and are generally used for slurry liquid waste. They are usually made of earthen structure directly digged into the ground and surrounded by berms, and even sometimes reinforced with concrete bedding. Dairy, swine, and beef cattle operation tends to favor this system. On the other hand, for manure having higher dry matter content, steel, wood, or concrete walled structures are favored. Concrete is the material of choice when it comes to manure storage since it can handle various physical and chemical weathering, like erosion. Important things to mention are that the manure storage facilities must be erected at least 15 meters away from the any water course. The ground where the livestock building and the manure storage facilities are constructed must be protected from any contact with the livestock waste by using watertight floors and must prevent any runoff infiltration. Most of treatment will be done in above ground tanks. To do this efficiently, the topography of the area should be adjusted in a way that would dictate a desired flow path of any leaking manure slurry. The treatment of such waste can further reduce the risk of pathogen spreading and as well transform the waste into reusable resource in agricultural and energy production sectors. Liquid solid separation can be achieved through settling or by using mechanical methods with uses of screens, centrifuges or belt presses. Machine processing available for poultry include drying systems that consist of a flexible tray dryer specially developed for evaporation drying of liquid manure, digestives from biogas plants and further regenerative sources of energy. Composting is a biological process that removes active pathogen and changes the organic waste into stable and mainly inorganic form, which will reduce the risk of contamination. The resulting biomass can be easily stored, transported, or also used as a natural fertilizer suitable for export. Anaerobic digestion of manure can be used to produce biogas. To do so, the manure is put in a closed tank reactor where archaebacteria will consume it, creating carbon dioxide and methane. Methane can then be used in a gas engine to produce electricity and heat. Concerning manure utilization, it should be understood that most conventional methods involve direct spreading. Commonly, the practice is to fertilize the crop fields before the growing season by spreading manure through a traveling gun or a drag hose. The main idea of either of these methods is to distribute a superficial layer of manure on the surface of the field. Through time, nutrients dissolve and seep into the soil. However, one drawback with the superficial field application is that part of the nitrogen content in the manure is quite volatile. Therefore, with exposed fertilizer to the atmosphere, ammonia and nitrous oxide are released and contributing not only to air pollution, but also reducing the amount of nitrogen content into the soil. Another factor to consider when dealing with superficial layer of covering is that runoff and soil saturation are very much issues that are difficult to be dealing with for farmers. Despite the concerns of conventional direct application of manure, there is an alternative that offers some solutions to the issues at hand. Manure field injection is a rather recent discovery in the agricultural world and as one can imagine involves subsurface deposing of refuse. <laughs> 